take life as it comes now. I don't figure out why or when or anything. It's a great life if you don't weaken, but who the heck wants to be strong? That's what I think. <laughs> I used to be in politics in North Dakota, and I had 17,000 pencils when I come from there. It was my hobby. I went to get cement blocks to build this house for my pencil. My God, they were so expensive, so I went over to the dump. And I thought, I'm going to make it out of bottles. And every place we went, and I seen it, play the bottles, you know, I picked them up. And and I counted my bottles here a while ago. I took two days off and counted them, and I have one million and fifteen bottles. That's quite a lot. I haven't got that many now, they're broke, but that's what I had. Oh, I get a lot of bottles. You should see the bottles I got up there now. Oh, my God, I don't know where they got all those bottles. Oh, bottles, bottles, bottles. <laughs> well, I don't know if you call them huts a building or not, but I've got about 15, I think, or 16. And I, and I enjoyed it. I didn't think this would work. You know, I built that pencil house, well, that wasn't big enough, and I built another one, that wasn't big enough, and. So I kept on building. And when I bought this place, there was no driveway out there. There was a ditch, and I put a pipe in for water and put more covered up of dirt, and a fellow drove along with a big fancy car. And he never said a word, but I went over and I said, what can I do for you? He stayed too long? Well, by God, he says, I haven't saw that woman shovel dirt in years, and I'm enjoying this. Ain't that crazy? There was a man come in the other door the other day from over there, and I was coming from here, and I got about halfway, and he said, are you the crazy woman that built this place? I said, I guess I am the only one here. <laughs> you know, nobody, if they're in their right mind, would build a place like this, especially an old woman. I was 55 years old or 60 when I started it. Oh, I just took an ocean. But I done everything here. Well, that's a cinch. Nobody ever done anything for me. I can see how ambitious I was. <laughs> My God, there's a lot of work keeping a place like this, besides having so many visitors. When we get all through showing the people around, I bring them into the meditation room. And we sit down and I sing a little bit. Did you ever hear Let the Rest of the World Go By? I'll sing it for you, huh? Because I can't play it on the piano. To a ball I did go where gowns were cut low, held up only by a strap. There was one I liked best, it was odd, I confess, it was made out of a map. Now he sings a chorus. Her back was Brazil, her chest was Bunker Hill, and just a little bit below was Mexico, and both her knees was Japanese, around her waist why there was Greece. Just then I spied my wife, and to save all future strife, I let the rest of the world go by. Now that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Cleopatra's bedroom, I don't know. They asked me why I named it. Well, I don't know. It just come to my mind. There's some millionaires lived down the hill, you know. And she said, I've got a bed and a dress that my mother gave me 28 years ago. So I took it, but I was offered $1,000 for that bed and dresser. That said, oh. I find a wonderful thing down at the dam. You know what them are, bottled? They're full of, well, they're full of water now, but they were full of whiskey on the airplane, you know? They didn't allow whiskey on the airplane, but they had them on the airplane full of whiskey. Yeah, oh, it's, I tell you, it's, when I look around and see this stuff, I got, I don't know how I got it. I tell you, it's funny things happen here. Oh, imagine me, look at putting all the things on there. That takes time, I tell you.
I was 15 when I got married, and I married a man 52 years old. And I lived with him till he died at 72. And uh, then, uh, oh gosh, what, then I took my seven kids and took off for Seattle after he died. And uh, I married a man, he never smoked, he never drank, and he never worked. He uh, buy a team of horses for $100, sell it for 200 We lived good. I had seven kids, too. Six of them died. It's too bad. I, I lost four boys and two girls. That's kind of hard on me now. I had my daughter staying out here, a girl at 35 years old, and was dying of cancer, and she liked roses so well. So I said, I'll go down to the dump and get you some headlights and make you a rose garden. So I did. And I put about 20 rose roots in there because I wanted them to bloom before she died. Well, she lived a year, but she seen them. The morning she come out here to, uh, to see her roses, they died the same morning she did. Can you imagine that? Nobody knows why. I think those headlights are pretty when the sun shines on them, don't you? I gotta watch my step, I tell you. Well, that's just a house my son lived in there. He was 57 years old and he was dying of cancer. And one day he come out here and he took a drink of wine and it stopped the pain in his chest. The next day he took another drink and that stopped the pain. The next day he took another drink and he talked foolish. I said, you can't do that here because it's a public place and I won't allow it. And uh, well, mommy says, what's the difference? When I die, they'll never take me to the graveyard. The hearse will be broke down. And five months later he died and we took him down to the Catholic Church and when they put him in the hearse, it broke down. Can you imagine that? I can't either. It's two things I can't understand. So a lady getting ready to go out there, and I just got through giving her a tour, and, and uh, I says, now I've told you my troubles, now you tell me yours. Well, she said, after listening to you, I haven't got any. Now, that's the house I lived in when I was 15 years old. That's my mother and dad. But you know, when I got married, my husband built onto that house and bought new furniture. I was sold, I think. Don't you? <laughs> and I looked just like my oldest daughter, and she was beautiful, but I never knew it when I was young. You know, I just took it for granted I was looking the way I was. <laughs> and I dressed good, you know, I dressed pretty good. I just never knew I was good looking. Can you imagine that? <laughs> when I think of that, I had six hundred dollars in there. That's where I had the three hundred dollars stole out of there. And uh, I've been dressing them up, you know. I ain't got much ambition, but I dress up a couple every day. No, sir, I had a doll on chair with a nice necklace. And a lady wanted to buy it the other day. And she said, I'll give you five dollars for it. And I sold it and put a blue one on there. Sometime I wish I drank and smoked. That's the only trouble. Well, they never done that years ago. The woman was had to go in the back room when she took a drink or smoke, and now, my God, you see it all over. I'd get drunk and I'd have a good time. <laughs> but I guess them days are gone forever. Well, and there's me and the man I was gonna marry. He was a sheriff on pictures. Kirk, his name is, Jack Kirk. He went to Alaska to see about something and he died up there. And then about a year later, I was going with another guy and I thought probably I'd marry him. And he went to some foreign country, and by God, he got killed. So I thought I'd give it up. Diamond Gems, Nevada Club. I love to gamble. I built those down there in the ground, a heart and a spade and a diamond and a, 
and a what you call it, a club. I must have done that when I come back from Las Vegas. You, you ever see a sign like that? San Francisco World's Fair in 39? <laughs> you wasn't born then. <laughs> but they make such remarks about my walk. You know, the men think more of that walk than they do of any house. Because everything I found at the dump, you know, I've got guns and everything in there. I saw a woman sitting here on the porch, and I thought she hurt herself. I got a towel that said it got French salad dressing on. She was sitting there with a paper and pencil and copying it off. Like that, you know, they step in and might tumble down. And here's another one. Here's a dish. Oh, it needs a lot of fixing up, I know. I get tired. You gotta keep passing it all the time, huh? Yeah. Not all the time, just when I feel like it. I've been something, I don't know if they're a movie star or not. You know, you get awful tired being a famous star, too. You know, so many people come and want to talk to you. I'm not used to it, of course, if I was brought up, you know, young. Well, I might get used to it. It wouldn't bother me. But I'm getting too old now, you know. 84. There's too much bother and too much work. Now, to tell the truth about my sister, think, well, my God, she said I'd be tickled to death if I was famous, so. Tell me what you've been doing all week. I haven't saw you for a week. Week? I haven't been over here for a month, I don't believe. We get together quite a bit and go out, you know. Well, we had not until you sold your car when you got crippled, and then you did. I haven't seen her on a... Don't no. say crippled. Well, why not? Kind of a uh, handicap. Oh. <laughs> this is good tea. Well, you had a good man, too. Oh, yeah. Everybody liked Ted. Good man is hard to find, huh? <laughs> well, what are you eating, chicken? Yeah. This time of the day? Well, what difference would it make so time of day? Well, I belong to three card clubs, so but I go to all of them too. I what? You go to all of them too. Oh, I don't well. belong to any, and I don't go to any. Well, you don't have time. Oh, you're a busy woman, but I don't have anything to do. All you do is stay home and take in money. <laughs> I wish I could do that. It's easy as she does. Yeah, but not so darn many people at one time, 40 people. My well, I can, come over and, I can come over and help. Yeah, I can be the cashier. I had uh, about 15 uh, senior citizens here the other day in the morning before you came. They were here, and they scattered all over, and one gave me a... I only charged them 75 cents to get in. And they all give me quarters and nickels and dimes and dollars, and I had to have the change in my pocket. Oh, God, and they were scattered all over the place. And that hurts her feelings when she gets all that money. <laughs> well, she's doing all right. Well, I'm looking out for myself anyway. I made this house because I've got 17,000 pencils. Or 18,000, as the case is. Go on in. She just needed a place for her pencil collection, so she was just going to build one bottle house and put her collection of pencils in it. And when she finished that, then she wanted to build a house for the dolls, and that's the way she kept on. So she has 15 uh, bottle houses here now. Don't think I'm tight when I stagger around because I've got arthritis in my legs and feet, and I've got to watch my step. Did you ever see a fence like this? Made out of television picture tubes. And what I found I didn't want, I put on there, glued it on. Oh, I've got to clean them off, too. My God, they look awful. I don't know how to put those water bottles in there. We never intend to come out and sit down. Well, they said if you'd clean the table off, we could sit down and have a beer. Um, well, did you ever hear of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? 
there's the Leaning Tower above the village. I always take them in here, you know, and I used to play the piano, but uh, the last rain spoiled the key, so I have to have it uh, fixed. Uh, the... But there was a, what was I going to say? Something I forgot it now. Uh, a fool and his money soon parted. Who got yours? <laughs> and there's one. Owing to the high cost of living, we eat every bean and pea in your soup. Oh, I got a lot of fun. She's getting rich. Rich. It's taking something out of my system that I just soon go without. I'm, I'm tell you. She's not poor like I am. You're poor. I've got a hundred thousand dollar house and talking about being poor. Yeah, but I have to live there. Well, I can't eat it. <laughs> and um, where would I go if I sold that? This plumber. She that talked was... about going to the rest home. If she goes to the rest home, I'll get her head examined. It's hard to to believe that she made and built all this. I can't believe it. When you look at all this work, it's wonderful. And she wasn't a spring chicken when she started it either. <laughs> and here she's way younger than I am. <laughs> yeah, but she ought to be proud. She's old. There ain't many people well, get to be... Well, I don't know to be proud about it. Well, they ain't many get to be 91 years old. <clears throat> when she first started, she came over and borrowed my wheelbarrow. And she used to mix cement in that with her hands. And then she'd put it on the bottles by hand and put them up on the wall, and that's the way she worked. Then I got educated to a trial. Or I wouldn't <laughs> have had no hands left. Got it done so, all that. How many years ago was that? Oh, that must have been 20 or 25 years ago. Oh, it's longer than that. Oh, yes. You know, I'd like to put up a... Uh, Bottle house, I've got so many bottles now. I'd like to put up a bottle house just for my pictures that I've got taken in the past few years. I could have a good sized house full of pictures. Well, can't you find room? No. Ain't room on here to build a back house. If you don't mind my. You shouldn't say that. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> well, is, are we on television now? I didn't think I so. Know. Well, anyway. I suppose we can talk even if we Well, you I've not. heard worse things than that on television. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that I don't like on television, but... Oh, you, you're more for news and society and all that well, darn stuff. Well, I like 60 Minutes. Something that's a fact. 60 Minutes not... and ain't a thing you can learn on there. Uh, I like facts, not fiction. You know, something that's true and live. There ain't nothing live on that. Two sixty well, minutes. Well, anyway, I, that's the craziest show I ever saw. Nothing to it at all. But then that's all right. It's a good thing we don't like the same things. <laughs> so no. my, but business must go on. Well, I guess she'll be busy with her business here, and uh, me, I'm I'm retired. I'm real tired. <laughs> I didn't think it was anything out of. I wasn't doing anything strange. I thought it was all right. You know, people compliment me, and I wondered what for. <laughs> I was having fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had a lot of fun, too. When I built this place, I didn't know what I was doing or what was going to happen. My God. So I never would have built it. But I had a dump close by, you know, and that helped. I tell you, we had the best guy down to the dump you ever saw. He'd put everything on the car for me. I found a whole two boxes of square tile like that down there. The box has never been opened. We said, I don't want them. I'll put them out for you. Put them on the truck. You know, help like that counts. Don't you think it does? The people used to help me a lot. So I uh, kept on going, and people kept coming. And <laughs> so I kind of ended up by having this place. Now look what's happened to it. My God, I'm known the world over. That's something. Now, just a poor country girl when I started. <laughs> If you got ambition, you can do something, and I must have had ambition.
they sold the dump for an airport and they closed up. So I took my Studebaker. I had a Studebaker pickup. So I went down there the last day, see what I could find. And boy, did I ever have a load. But I was coming down the pike there and I saw a red light and heard a horn. I knew what that meant. But I didn't stop. I come home. That's resisting an officer, you know. And I said, now what have I done? But he said, have you got a license to carry that stuff? I said, no, I haven't. He said, your back window's broke. I said, I know it. He said, you haven't got no taillight. I said, I know it. He said, you haven't got no muffler either. I said, I know it. Then he went and opened the door where I get in at. He said, you haven't got no horn either. I said, I know it. He said, you haven't got no emergency brake either. I said, I know it. And I haven't got no license either. Do you know that? It's a round house. That's the only one I got that's round. Looks better round, don't it? But my, it was an awful job. I've got 17,000 bottles in here. And I made it two feet and a half in the ground. The lady says, you know, I had no business doing that because you had to shovel out all the dirt. That's no job for a woman. Yeah, but I said I wouldn't have to climb, so I had to put the roof on. And she thought that was all right then. See, I done all the framework myself. Even the men tell me they don't know how I done it. I don't know how I done it. Mannequin I found at the dump, but I put a dress on her, a velvet dress, oh, it was a plushie, and a mink stole, and went out there one day and both her arms were broke off when her mink stole was gone and the dress was gone. Well, now they didn't have to do that to break her in two. You know, it's awful when you can't trust anybody. I never heard of a round bed, my God. I lived in the country, <laughs> didn't see much. And I found that at the dump 20 years ago. And I wonder who had that there. It's a, uh, well, I don't know what it is, do you? thing to me. You know, there's a lady here and, and uh, she saw that bottle there. He said, I've got a hobby too. I says, what's your hobby? Collecting glass corks. Well, I says, what good is a glass cork if you haven't got no bottle to put it in? Oh, she said, I get the bottles too. The next morning I come out here and my I had 15 bottles and the glass corks were gone in every one of them. Now, wasn't that a nice thing to do? Well, I didn't know those blue bottles were worth something, but I get 25 and 50 cents a piece out of there. But I put them in there. <laughs> There's a fireplace, and I've got a nice fire screen made out of intravenous feeding tubes. Once in a great while, I get to go to the Catholic Church here, but, you know, I can't leave things like this and go. Just steal everything I got. That's what makes me so darn mad. But it don't do no good to get mad, does it? But I uh, try to live up to my, well, I don't do nothing wrong. I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't burglarize or anything. I don't know. Outside of that, I think I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. You live alone and they don't pay much attention to you, you know. But, uh, I ain't got nobody to boss me around or anything, you know. <laughs> so, but I guess I gotta take it. I don't know what else I can do. I don't wanna get married again. I don't want another man. Cause I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> I was 84 years old last month. <laughs> That's the trouble with me. I forget things that happen. I don't know why I should, my God. Oh, I, you know it's terrible when you forget things. Maybe 
Maybe I could have got a little straighter. I don't know. For an old lady, I guess so. They're not very straight anyway. <laughs> I'm all done here. Well, I don't know. I've done so many pencils, I can't think anymore. your garter just an inch above your knee if my hand goes a little farther do not put the blame on me the hair on yours is turned to silver the hair on mine is turned to gold put the two of them together silver threads among the gold you can't print that song <laughs> Don't you want to see what's in here? You know, I made a rule around here. The last person out of the building has to shut the door. 